Hi, I'm Lel from Made by Marley. Today I'm going to be making these little beauties. They are um, rustic um, plant pots and a, a wire cloche. I made two of them, one with a bird on them and uh, one with a rabbit. So this is what we're going to be making today. Uh, you need a couple of plant pots, a piece of chicken wire, some paint and um, I printed off from my computer a picture of a rabbit and a picture of a bird from the graphics fairy. I just printed them off, I just simply cut them out and mod podge them on. You need some mod podge as well and some little bits of dried up moss but that's it. And what I've tried to do with this technique is, if I can show you one close up before we start, is I wanted it to look like it had been outside, it had had various coats of paint um, and the moss had started to, to start it to kind of grow on it so that it's got a sort of kind of fantastic sort of aged sort of crackle appeal and I did the same with the little saucer that it sits in. These were a pound in Asda, I think these were 40 pence the little things that you sit them in. And if you get a nice plan and um, they look awesome and the, little wire, the one with the little wire cloche, it was really easy to make, uh, the cloche. Um, it's just about bending some wire and that's the little bird one. Um, so, and it's got some fab sort of texture. So, if this is what you want to make, you're in the right place and I'm going to go on and make it now. And before I do anything, could I just ask you to please subscribe? I don't have any followers, so I'm trying to kind of whip you up in a frenzy, show you what you're going to make first and then and then make it. Thank you. Well, the first thing we're going to make is the wire cloche. So I've cut out um, a square of wire. I quite like it to fit in the top of this plant pot, you know, so like that. So what... I want to do is I want to turn it round and you want to have your piece that's finished at the bottom just so to keep it tidy. Now I've never done this before but I'm sure there's a, a way to do it. Now the first thing I would recommend is that you wear gloves. I'm not wearing any. Um, not that I don't have them I do. It's just that I like to be able to get a hold of things. And then I have wire cutters and all the other necessary bits. I think what really the principle is is just wiring it back together but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it together in sections first so naturally where I think it's going to go so I'm going to do that there and that back down there hoping you can see this I don't want it to end up looking untidy like it's an untidy sort of um, put together you know I want the back to look it is going to be the back, but if I end up putting it, placing it somewhere in the middle of a room, I want all sides to look reasonably neat. So I'm just winding this round so that you can't, it forms one join. I'm going to now go on and do the bottom bits next because obviously you're going to kind of shape your top bit like a sort of cloche. Now I've no idea how we're going to do that bit yet, but um, we'll just fix this together first. You might need wire nippers at some point just to get a hold of it and kind of flatten it out and bend it. Um, it's just that some of these bits out. Now this isn't very difficult, but it is kind of sharp and tricky. But I think once we've got the main bits together, um, I think it's going to look... I'm just using the wire um, nippers just to nip the wire down flat so it's not sticking out. Um... So I'm pretty happy with that join so far. Now, I'm hoping you can see this. I'm going to tip it up towards the camera. Uh, now you want to start kind of like, almost like kind of grabbing it. Um, and sort of pincing it together with your hands. Just kind of like make sure my, my bottom edge is nice and still circular. It kind of looks a bit like a Christmas cracker at the moment. I'm just going to fix these bits together now. I just didn't want to do too many bits, fix together too many bits at the top because obviously I knew we were going to be pushing that in. So um, so that's the sort of basic, you can fiddle about with its shape 
and then you've got this kind of Christmas cracker kind of shape going on at the top. Now what I'm actually going to do is I've got some twine here and um, hopefully um, I can tighten up this top bit by putting twine on it. Now I'm having thoughts about what I think I'm going to do with mine because I, I don't have any sort of gold spray and I'm not wanting to do it obviously gold so what I'm going to do is once I've done this bit is I'm going to um, spray it grey which it already is but then I'm going to um, put a spray of kind of white over the top of it if you've got bits that you think need to come out you need to poke them out use the wire clippers because you can actually kind of bend it more with them and then you're kind of saving your fingers In shape now I've got a little curtain ring that I want to try and attach on the top but I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this but I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it down onto itself like this to try and get rid of the sharp bits poke them all down until you've got like almost a sort of flowery sort of shape get rid of all your sharp bits poke them down I think this is the principle now I've not seen this done so I don't know if this is the principle but it's the principle of what I'm showing you I just thought it'd be really nice for spring and you know quite cute um, I quite like the sort of rusticy kind of feel of I love checking why I think it just looks awesome right so I'm going to lay it flat so you can have a look at it that's what it looks like just now. So this bit here I think is looking pretty good. There's some straggly um, pieces of wire that I want to kind of just bend around. That's your basic shape. Now it's what to do with this top bit that's going to be our problem. So I've bent it down on top of itself. And now what I'm doing is kind of bending this bit up to the top to kind of form like a sort of actually do you know what it looks kind of like a little flower I might not put the ring on it Nothing, there's nothing difficult about that. So let's have a look and see if it fits in the front part. Perfectly, that's what it'll look like when it got plant pot. So now we're going to get on and we're going to paint our plant pot. I'm not going to do any more about that. I will give it a spray, but I'll do that once I've started on the top. Now the pot is just a standard pot, I just bought it in Asda, I think it was 99 pence, it's got a little um, tree, um, you know, the little tree so that you can water them. I'm going to off camera, I'm going to just go away and chalk paint this white, just using rust white chalk paint and I'll get the little tree and I'll paint it too. And then That's my pot, it's green. all painted and we've not been, I've been given the solid colour coat because we're going to be shabbying them up and I've painted down inside just so that you, it, the paint doesn't stop. I printed off two decals from the graphic fairies, one of a rabbit and one of a bird and I'm just decoupaging them onto the pots making sure that I get plenty of glue around all of the edges and they're stuck down really well and um, it's really important that that you know that you get all the edges with them because if you're going to water them I'm going to seal these at the end but if you're going to water them you're going to be wanting um, them to be nice and stuck down and waterproof so they are um, just sticking the wee the wee bird on Bosch just like that quick as you like and um, not taking a lot of time I also you can see in the background there I painted the two little saucers that go with the plant pots that's them done I'm going to be getting some napkins and some Mod Podge I'm just going to be grabbing 
um, lots of bits of ripped up napkins. It's the back of a napkin, you know, when you separate them for decoupaging. I save the backs of them and then I'm just crumpling them up and putting them randomly on the edges, around the rim, here and there, all over the pot, because that's the bit that makes it look like it's had a few different colours, coats of paint, and it makes it look thick when you go to paint it and put some texture on it. So there you can see I've just kind of So that's the rabbit, the rabbit and the bird glued on, right? So we're going to work on the rabbit first and I'm mixing up a dark brown and what I'm starting to do is I'm starting to water, put watery paint in the texture and just on the um, on the pot itself I'm making up a sort of grey and I'm wiping it back and I'm just repeating the steps. I keep mixing darker paint because I want it a little bit darker in some areas than other areas. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm now mixing up a really dark colour because I think maybe at that point I decided it needed to be a little bit darker. I'm wiping it back. I'm going round the whole pot doing exactly the same thing. Paint finishes are about building up layers, especially if you're wanting a paint pot to look like it's been out in the weather and it's aged. So um, just add one layer so I'm adding the dark layer first and I'm making sure that the plenty of paint gets in the texture that we put on with the napkin I'm watering it down and I'm brushing it off and so that's me going all the way around with my dark I'm making sure that I've got inside the pot because nothing gives away nothing gives a, 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 a kind of paint finish away if it's not finished right to the edges and you can look down it and you can see that somebody's done it so now I'm going in with the darker colour I'm paying particular attention this time to the um, where I put the napkin, where the texture is to make sure that it all falls in all of the little cracks. I'm watering down a little bit to make sure it all goes in there. Done. Then I've got a greeny sort of grey colour which now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all over the plant pot and soften that black sponging mark that um, you can see as we go. Um, so um, I'm softening it off making sure that that grey green isn't and it's not just big black spodges where my paintbrush has been you want to see where the, the the texture of the brush but you don't want big splodges so i'm softening it all the way around i'm making sure that i'm doing the top edges as i do it and then i'm kind of cleaning off the rabbit making sure that it um that it's uh, not covered in paint it's got mod podge on it so it's easy to clean now what i'm doing is i'm taking a darker color of paint again more of a black and this time I'm really meaning it. I'm putting quite a lot on and I'm not rubbing it off as much. I'm going under the sort of ledge bit of the top of the pot and I'm making sure that I've got plenty down the bottom. And um, that's going to make sure that um, uh, it's all got its coat and colour on it. Um, it's done. But it's not finished because what I'm doing now is I'm just mixing more of the dark around it again. Um, and... I'm adding a little bit of the green at the same time and just making sure that there's loads and loads of dark um, colours on it. Sorry, you can hear my children screaming. It's happy screaming. I've got some green paint and what I'm doing now with the green is I'm mixing it in with some of the darker colour paint and I'm making it look like it's been outside and it's covered in moss. Um, so I'm kind of paying particular attention to where moss would grow, so up around the edges and... Um, of the pot near the top and um, if you'll see me in a minute I'm going to go back down and make sure that I've got lots of this sort of dark greeny mossy colour at the very bottom of the pot as well because when pots have been left outside they kind of tend to get mossy where you know the, the tops and the sort of bottoms and then I'm just doing a wee bit sort of green here and there on the pot just to kind of finish that up a little bit wiping back any bits that I think are too strong under the rim and then I've got my lighter green again and I'm just maybe softening up some of the bits that are uh, a little bit too dark. And if you want, you don't. You can stop there, but you can keep going. You can keep adding more and more and more layers. I got to the point where I thought it looked like it, it was shabby enough and it looked like it had been outside. So um, I, I kind of just left it at that stage um, once I'd kind of softened up some of the edges at the top. And now is I am just gluing real moss little patches here and there um, onto the pot with some Mod Podge 
um, just to finish the look. So these are the pots, um, all finished and uh, done. That's the, the bird one, my stand, and this is the one with the, the rabbit on it. I'm going to give you really good close-ups in a minute, but I'm just going to try and show you how I would probably style this one out. Um, so what I'd probably do is nothing too difficult. I'd probably just put some Hesse in, in my pot like that. So there was a bit hanging out like this. And then what I would do is I'd put um, a block of Oasis in there, just like that. Yep. And then... Um, Get all this. I probably pop some greenery, just some simple greenery in in here like this, and then pop a little cute rabbit on it. And the finishing touch is the cloche. Now I think I'm going to have to do this so you can see it. And this is going to be the tricky bit. You want the join at the back and the rabbit and everything. So just kind of pop it up and you can arrange your little bits um, sticking out of it like that. Um, I'm just going to tuck this hazy and down in there just, just now because I'm doing it on camera and fit that down over it. And there we have, stay, there we have a really fun, really cute, really vintage, shabby, um, sort of farmhouse sort of uh, spring display, display so what I'll do is I'll give you a close up of this one I'll give you a close up of the other one and then what I'll do is I think I'll take some nice staging shots so that you can see um, how it looks here we go I'm trying to get it all in um, I'll go from the sort of top so there's the top and I just I just did what I said I kind of gave it a coat of undercoat grey although it was already grey and then I just put some white over the top of it, there's that just that piece of hessian and the greenery and the little rabbit. Um, yeah, and there's our just turn this a little bit. Um, I put with a little bird on it, and there's all the texture, the pieces that I've sanded back, the kind of cracks that I've put into it to make it look like it's been sitting outside. Um, up extra moss and dirty bits and put some green splodges on the bottom because quite often moss gets stuck and I'll just try and get into this texture here. Makes it look like it's been painted over and over again and then left out in the garden and got really rusty. Um, and there's our little cloche which was all really simple to make. Um, I'll just try and wobble the camera over and I'll try and give you a good look at the the rabbit one, I think what I'll do with the rabbit one is I'll just turn it on its side. So there's the rabbit one. Oops, I'm going to have to do a little bit of wash repair on there. The trick is to put quite a lot of Mod Podge on your moss. There's the, the full rabbit. Um, and, the, and this is its tree. So again, I just made it really dirty. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Hopefully you can understand that it's not that tricky to make. It's just about slapping on lots of paint, building up texture, putting something underneath it to give it that it's been done before look. The two, de the two uh, paper decals came from um, the um, Graphics Fairy, which I just printed off. My colour print, I'm not a fancy print, I just cut them off, cut them out and glued them on once I painted the pot white. It's good to have a white base, because, especially with chalk paint, because that already adds a layer of... Um, sort of shabby and, and thicker sort of texture. So um, my name's Leo. Um, I have a company called Made by Marley which makes craft blanks and craft decals but when I'm not doing that I'm doing videos on all the little uh, craft things I do around the house or the things that I sell 
or looking at decorating pieces of my house it's all on here so if you like this and you want to see more carry on there's lots of videos um i don't have any subscribers right now so please feel free to subscribe and if you think somebody else might like to make this then feel free to share it and leave a comment and ring the bell so that you get notified of all the new videos thank you very much